In this video, we discuss how to perform a simple interrupted suture. A simple interrupted suture is usually the first technique learned by medical students. It's relatively straightforward to perform and is most useful in practice for small incisions or in contaminated wounds such as you might find in the emergency room. The first step in this and really any suture technique is to use the forceps to stabilize and evert the skin. Note in this video how the forceps are actually folding the skin backwards towards the needle. This is very important because it allows the needle to enter the skin at a 90 degree angle. This does two things. Number one, it allows the person's suturing to follow the path of the needle, which prevents trauma to the skin and also prevents damage to the needle. And number two, it allows the skin to become everted when the knot is tied. Once the skin is in the proper position, the needle driver gently pushes the needle through, always following the curve of the needle. Next, the forceps are used to grab the needle, rotate it through the skin, and stabilize it on the skin so that the needle driver can reload it. It's much easier to reload the needle into the needle driver while stabilizing on the skin of the patient rather than trying to do it in the air. Next, the forceps stabilize and ever the skin on the opposite edge of the incision, just like in step one. The needle is then rotated through the skin, always following the curve of the needle. The suture is pulled through and the knot is tied. So that's the basic technique. Let's think about a few more complicated situations. When you're approaching a larger incision, one good way to start the closure is first by setting the corners. This means place a suture at the top and bottom of the incision. This helps flatten the corners and prevent dog ears. Next, place the suture in the middle of the incision. When this knot is tied, it'll close the center and show you approximately how many more sutures you need to place in order to be able to close the incision and do this properly without creating bunching skin on either side. You can repeat this technique over and over until the incision is closed. As you get more comfortable with this technique, in order to improve efficiency, you don't need to necessarily reposition the needle in the needle driver in between the sides of the skin. You can simply pass the needle through both sides of the skin, grab it in your forceps and pull it through. As long as you follow the curve of the needle, this technique works just fine. 